And welcome back to Deeper Than Most Guys. I'm your host, DJ. And I'm your host, Sal. And we are bringing you something special and something fun. We are. We're back with another Lit Myth mashup. Yes. And, yeah. oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, it's been a while since we've done one of these. I know. Yeah, it really has. Um, I think we skipped a month or two. Yeah. From Give mashups. Take, yeah. Yeah, so we're back with another lit mashup, and this one is Persian mythology. If you can't tell by our attire. So, yeah. Also, guys, we have a short stuff bonus for you to check out that we just dropped. So, get into it. Yes, we covered the case of Flint Lee from Mississippi. Mm, And that was FNC part 22. Ooh. Yes. So, yeah, check that out if you haven't. But without further ado, let's get into this DLM. Let's get Actually, on. these DLMs, because there's two okay. of them. Okay. So, the first one is What in the Doppelganger? <laughs> Last Friday, a photo went viral of a couple of doppelgangers. However, this is not their first encounter. Now, I just want to stop there because. Like, what is the likelihood that you come across a doppelganger? What's the likelihood that you have a doppelganger? Right. And not only that, that you have run into them more than once. Yeah, right. That's crazy. In this big old world. I don't think it's slim in that. Right. After unexpectedly meeting again, the two men went out to have a pint to celebrate. Neil Douglas, 32, took the selfie, which he claimed was full of total weirdness, which, hell yeah... This shit do sound kind of weird. Right. Yeah, I don't know how I would feel about that. Just a person that looks like you. Like, exactly. Like, you, that's, yeah. you're not even related to. Right. I don't know how that happens. It's the weirdest thing. We should probably, like, do some research and talk about it in an episode. Right. Because it is a very interesting topic, and it's not talked about a lot. Right. The doppelganger from London, Robert Sterling, 35, was en route to Glaway, I think that's how you say it, Glaway, from Stansted, creating this random meetup. So, they just so happened to be going kind of on a similar path and ran into each other. But not only ran into each other, the two had ended up mistakenly sitting next to each other and then realized who each other were. Oh, wow. Yeah, they were, like, placed next to each other in seats, and then they, like, looked at each other, and they are like, what the fuck? Hey, it's you again. All right. That's so creepy. That's weird. I don't know. That's some weird shit. <laughs> like, I don't even know how to feel about that. I'd probably freak out. I probably would, too, to be honest. The next DOM we have is titled, Attending Her Own Funeral. Oh, wow. This is terrifying and honestly pretty sad. Okay. On April 26, a funeral in Peru was shockingly interrupted after knocking was heard from inside the coffin. Oh, shit. It's terrifying. Right. Rosa Isabel Caspindes Cayaca's family had gathered together in the city of Lombayet to pay their final respects to their loved ones. Rosa was involved in a very serious car crash in the region of Chiclayo Pisky Road that left her nephews with serious injuries in taking the life of her brother-in-law. Damn. That's sad. That's sad very far. sad. I've never been in a car accident. Have you? Um, no, not that I can remember. Yeah, same. And it just sounds like a very traumatic and scary experience to go through if you survive. I mean, right. they usually are very serious exactly. injury wise nobody usually walks away from a car crash a-okay right unless it's a minor one right rosa had been pronounced dead following the car crash and later loaded into a coffin for her funeral when her relatives hoisted the coffin onto their shoulders they began to hear strange sounds i wonder what the strange oh. sounds were Probably her screaming out for help, like, damn, get me out of here. Well, I don't know, because she was, like, weak. Oh, or she was, like, moaning or groaning. Maybe, yeah, that'd be creepy. The coffin was then lowered and opened. There lay a weak but very much alive Rosa looking at them. 
How would you feel in that moment? Bro, shit, I gotta go. Like, if that was your aunt That's or crazy. your cousin or your sister, like... That's pretty sad, though. But, I mean, it's it's like, I don't know. This is like a hopeful feeling for damn you. Because it's like, whoa, she's alive. Yeah, like, let's, did, let's yeah. get her to the hospital right. and let's do what we can. Yeah. Um, I I don't know. I would have a mix of emotions. I would, wouldn't really know how to feel. Right. It's, it's just, you don't expect that. So. At all. But definitely I would be hopeful that, all right, let's get her to the hospital, see what we can do, and at least have somebody that's saved exactly. from this situation. Exactly. Cemetery caretaker Juan Segundo Cajo said she opened her eyes and was sweating. I immediately went to my office and called the police. Which is good. That's what he should have did. Right. Um, he was quick on his feet, it sounds like. Definitely. Which is what they need in that situation, yeah, honestly. It's like, if she's alive, she can't yeah. be okay if you know, we get the right help. Yeah, exactly. She was then rushed to the hospital by relatives in her coffin. Once there, Rosa had shown weak signs of life and she was put on life support. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Quick man. turn of events. Right, right. You know? But at least they're trying. Just, yeah. Just the good part. Which is all you can do in that yeah. situation. I mean, who knows how long she was in the coffin for. Right. But sadly, she passed away only a few hours after. Yeah, and that's just... Heartbreaking. Yeah. To not only have to deal with this once, but like twice in such a short span of time. Like, I don't know. Right. Like I said, a mix of emotions. And I mean, we send our condolences definitely because definitely. that's traumatic. Super. I wouldn't know how to deal with that. Yeah. I don't know. How, like, how can you? I don't know how you could deal with that though. Yeah. I don't know. Her family had to say farewell twice and is now demanding answers for the mishap. As they should. They should definitely get answers because what would cause them to say that she was deceased? Right. And I also read an article that she might have been in a coma and that's what mm -hmm. led them to believe that she was deceased at the time. Mm -hmm. But it's like, damn, you didn't, like, thoroughly check? Right. I'm sure she still had a pulse. Exactly. But the fact that they had to say farewell twice, that really breaks my heart. Like, that's really sad. Right. Having to go through that. Such a traumatic up and down. Twice. Like, in the same day. Right. Nonetheless. So, yes, those were our DOMs for today, and now we're going to get into the Persian mythology background before we get into our deities. Mm -hmm. We have six deities today. Yes. There's three each, and they don't have backstories or, like, little tales that go right. with the gods and goddesses, but it's still going to be a lit mid-mashup, because, honestly, this shit's pretty cool. It's cool as fuck. And the like, deities that I found are different than anything that we've done before. And I think okay. you can say the same about For yours. Sure. Yeah. So this is going to be a fun one. Definitely. So a little bit about Persian mythology and its background. The mythology of ancient Persia originated in the region known as Greater Iran. And this includes the Caucasus, Central Asia, South and West Asia. Which is where a lot of the ties come mm -hmm. in with the belief system as right. well as the religion. Exactly, yeah. Of the time. Mm -hmm. It was derived from Zoroaster between 1500 and 1000 BCE. I never understood that yeah, time, how it. to like understand that time. I still don't. Because I don't know if it just comes down it. and then, I don't know. It's weird. I know that's, no, I don't know what that is. I know that BC is before Christ. Right. So it's BCE. Yeah, I don't know. Or is it before crucible exploration? I don't know. Uh -uh. Zoroaster's prophecy encouraged adherents to express their faith through the principle of good thoughts, good words, and good deeds. Good things, good things. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's All nice. positive things. Gotta love it. I don't know. A lot of these mythologies that we've done, a good bit of them have been pretty nice. Yeah, very positive and just beautiful mm -hmm. the i don't know where the 
stuff like really comes from but the imagination or just the belief mm -hmm. and the stories that get passed on are right. pretty remarkable yeah the persian empire was close neighbors with rome and greece it is almost impossible to explore either of those empires without mentioning the influences of the persian empire the three empires often exchange many things, including art and religious beliefs. And that's how Rome is intertwined mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. usually compared to the Persian deities. Right. So we'll see quite a bit of that. So it'll be interesting because I never like thought about Persian gods before. Neither have I. So now we're going to get into our first deity and this one is a god. Mithra is considered, from Roman belief, so there's those ties again, to be an astrological deity and is the god of the rising sun, contracts, covenants, and friendship. So, once again, positive things for the most part. I don't know, contracts, well, contracts are a good thing, actually, because it's an agreement between two right. parties. Right. So, that could be good. Covenants, hmm. I guess a little bit. A little bit. And then friendship, of course, that's good. And the rising sun. Everybody loves a good sunrise. Mm -hmm. He was also in charge of oversight on the changing of seasons, maintaining cosmic order and protecting the faith of kings at the time. He was also worshipped during war because of this, resulting in him also being considered a war god. He is closely linked to the Vedic god Mitra, and I was going to talk about Mitra in this, but then I realized they're kind of like the this one and the same of a deity. Yeah. As described by Avesta, which is Zoroastrian scripture, Persian Mithra rides a bright chariot led by white horses, making the sun rise. He wields a silver spear, a bow with arrows of gold, axes, and daggers. I love the whole chariot thing. Yeah, it's cool. As well. Like, that's how you know. It's cool as well. Like, I just be out here. Yeah, riding around. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. He also carries a mace. I don't necessarily know what a mace is, but if we can figure it out, we'll put a picture of it if you're watching this. I think it's like the, the ball, the swipe ball, like on a stick. Oh, I think you're right, actually. Should we look it up? Yeah. No. So a mace is a blunt weapon, a type of club or verge that uses a heavy head on the end of a handle to deliver powerful strikes. So a mace typically consists of a strong, heavy wooden or metal shaft. Damn. And a head made of stone, bone, copper, bronze, iron, or steel. So it basically literally just looks like a club or... What are those things that you use to clean a fire mm. in a fireplace? That little stick that you poke at it? Oh, One of those me. things. <laughs> um, so yeah, he also carries a mace, which is a symbol that represents his role as guardian of cosmic order and as the god that re legitimizes kingship. Basically, with him legitimizing kingship, it's legitimizing the belief in the kings and basically their ruling power. Mm -hmm. He's got to basically approve of the king. That's fire. Yeah. That's fucking dope, actually. Mithra is known to be very vigilant and cannot be deceived. He knows the true intentions and hearts of people. He keeps darkness at bay, and he is the most powerful force against the lord of the demons, known as Ariman, who feared Mithra's mace more than any other god's weapon. So that mace was not something well. to play with. He's yeah. It was something serious, for sure. And the next god we have is Rashnu, the god of justice. Mm. Yeah, he's pretty cool. Well, in my opinion. He sits alongside Mitra, the god that you just mentioned, and Sarosha, the god of religious obedience. And Sarosha is also known as Sarush. Sarush. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and together, they determine the fate of dead souls. He often sits on the Shivnat Bridge, which is also known as the bridge between life and death. He is often assisted by the angel Sarush and the holy maiden Dana. They represent the conscience of the deceased while protecting the soul before judgment. That's cool. 
That's a hefty roll. Hell yeah, that's a hell of a roll. He would often get the record of the person's life over the course of three days since death and make his final decision. So he got three days to scrape up whatever he can off these people. And then make Damn. a decision. Damn. I mean, at least he gets to sit there and judge and he's not just looking at somebody and he's like, mm. Right. Like. Right. And this decision would send the soul to the House of Song or the House of Lies. And I'm guessing those are perspective, heaven and hell. Mm-hmm. And that was Rashnu, the god of justice. Yeah, not much on him, but he seemed pretty cool from... To be honest, y'all, there wasn't much on any of these deities. But before we get back into the thick of it, we're going to take a moment to thank our sponsor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. It's free and it's easy to use. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast straight from your phone or computer, making it the best user experience around. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more, making it so you don't have to upload to each individual platform. And the best thing about it, you can make money straight from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So please, download the free Anchor app or go to Anchor FM to get started. And that's anchor.fm, spelled A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M. So what are you doing? Download the free Anchor app now. And we're back, guys. Like a butt crack. So now we're going to talk about the goddess Anahita. She was the goddess of health and, more specifically, fertility. She was also the goddess of healing, water, and wisdom. Due to her life-giving capabilities, she became connected to ancient Persian warfare. Soldiers would pray to her prowl to battle in order to survive the fight. She is also referred to by the names Anahid, Anahit, and Anatis. She's one of the most popular deities of the time. She's often compared to the Hindu goddess Saraswati. Mm. Yeah, pretty cool. And we talked about Saraswati in our Hindu myth mashup. So if you haven't seen our Hindu myth mashup, I definitely recommend that because that was a a bomb. If that wasn't a sign to go check it out, I don't know what it is. What he said. Anahita had the most shrines dedicated to her praise than any other Persian goddess. Her shrines are still used today. Anahita was closely related to Mithra, which was my first deity, with keeping peace between the other deities. So they they were the peacemakers amongst the gods and goddesses. She is one of the most popular Persian deities overall, so she's very much loved. She was very much worshipped. Just one of the the top-notch deities that there was. Nice. She is depicted as a beautiful woman wearing a white gown with gold embroidery. She sported gold jewelry, including gold earrings, a necklace, and a crown. Oh shit, wait. (laughs) Before I move any further, (laughs) how come we haven't mentioned this random ass table? (laughs) Where is that shit about it? I'm sorry y'all, we're lit, literally. But, yeah, so <laughs> we got to take on the wall. <laughs> We're on the construction, guys. Literally. So that's why they're <laughs> that's why there's tape on the wall. She carries the twigs of life in one hand and rides a chariot led by four horses. Oh shit. Yeah. I know not only four horses and oh shit, but like her horses were like OP. They were cool as fuck. So her horses represented wind, rain, sleet, and the clouds. Oh, shit. Some majestic shit. Literally. Love it. So cool. And I guess you can say my outfit and my look for today. Oh, don't mind my goldfish. My outfit and my look for today. If you're watching this, are kind of inspired by Anahita. This next deity is Aisma, and he is the demon of fury. I don't know. I'm playing. Yeah. What if it was spelled like that, though? Honestly, it's A E S M A. He is the personification of wrath. He chases newly deceased souls on their way to see Rashnu. 
Which was your first deity, right? Yes, which was the judgment guy. Look at you trying to be like me. Not even. This is a mess. <laughs> <laughs> He's often depicted as short and stout with tusks. He also endures conflict and war, and often, he's often compared to Ares of Roman myth. Some more Roman tie-ins. Mm -hmm. It was rumored throughout Persian myth that he was responsible for the attacks on livestock and especially cows. Why everybody hate the cows? Yeah. Aliens hate the cows. The Persians hate the cows. <laughs> what, what happened? What's the problem? <laughs> His chief rival is Sharosha, and I also mentioned him earlier too. And they constantly battle for souls before judgment. Our fifth deity is Vayu, god of the wind who chases away evil. Oh. And there's some cool shit. It's believed kind of like Raiden in a sense, like the yeah. winds and lightning and all that fun stuff. Yeah. It's believed that he lived between two realms, and those realms were Ahura and Mazda, not the car. <laughs> With this in mind, he can be perceived as good or evil. He was known as a Yazada, which is a spirit worthy of worship, and he was also known as a Deva, which was an evil spirit which wasn't worthy of re um, worship. This would be determined by which way the wind blew. Imagine that shit. That nigga wishy-washy as hell. That's fuck. He's betrayed as a fierce warrior with golden weapons and a very sharp spear. Oh, shit. He get down. Yeah. Most deaf. He usually fights against darkness, but on the contrary, can easily become an opponent of the good gods. So, so literally, yeah, it depends. Like, during battle, if the wind blowing this way... And he's like, you know, working with the good guys, beating the evil spirits. Right. And then the wind started blowing that way. And he about to start it. fighting his own. Uh, no remorse. This guy is wild. Wishy-washy. In the later religion, Zorvanism, he became associated with earthly space, time, and infinite space and time. Hmm. So, just encompassing our... <laughs> Just encompassing. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> just encompassing space and time as a whole. Mm. He is also known to be a natural phenomena, not just a deity. He is the guardian of the air. He is also the representation of a demon manifestation of unclean and harmful air. Oh, shit. So he can really just fuck it all up all right. <clears throat> for everybody. What the fuck you want? He provides life through the rain and clouds, but can easily take it away by storm. I thought that was badass. Yeah. That is kind like of Raiden bad. from Mortal Kombat. Yeah. It just, yeah. Really? Our last and final deity is Ariman, the god of friendship. His name means friend or companion. That's pretty cool. Hell yeah, it is pretty cool. Just straight up. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Literally. He's the embodiment of elevation of character and spirit and honor and nobility. Those are all good things. Oh, yeah. I like that. And it makes it even cooler because he often is invoked at weddings to bring good fortune to the union. Like a good luck charm. Yeah. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much all I could find on him, really. There's literally not a lot of information on these deities. The best we could, but... I don't know, I really enjoyed that. Hell yeah. And now we're gonna get into the wiggity, 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 wiggity wind down. And this time around, we have three. This is gonna be fun. Ooh. Yeah. Our first one is which deity would you be? I think I could be Rashnu. Why? It just seems like a cool job, really. Yeah. I think that I would be Anahita. Oh, yeah, I would. She just sound like a badass in the most majestic way. Why down number two? Do the parallels to other belief systems surprise you? Mm. I would say not really because you see that quite a bit. Right. When stories are just passed down over time mm. and they're spread to different areas and communities mm. and that they're kind of creating their own version of right. the story. So, no, not really too far-fetched. 
Yeah, I can agree. I don't think it's too out there because, like we mentioned in this episode, Persia, Rome, and Greece were practically neighbors at this point. Exactly. So it makes sense that they would share a lot of the same beliefs, viewpoints, religious or religious practices, all of that. Everything like lifestyle flying together. Our third wind down is what is one thing you learned from this episode? Hmm. Honestly, I didn't even know like they were that close together. The what? Persia, Rome, and Greece. I didn't even know. I didn't either, but it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It does. And you know, we haven't done we haven't done a Roman myth mashup oh, yet. Yeah, yeah, we haven't. It's coming soon. It's coming, y'all. What is one thing that I learned from this episode? I would say. Oof. I didn't know that you could be placed in a coffin and be pronounced dead when you're still alive. I didn't know that. Th- like that's possible to fuck up that bad. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Cause how do you miss that? Like, huh. that's just mind blowing to me. So yeah, that's one thing I learned. Cause that's ridiculous. That's yeah, fuck. That's who was in charge? Who right. was doing it? But to cap this off, we're gonna end it on a high note, and we are gonna. Sprinkle in some kind words for you guys because we be slacking and we need to start throwing them <laughs> into every episode again. Oh, and about the tape. Did we get into the tape? I think we, we were just laughing. About the tape. <laughs> so, you know, we've been talking about doing our background and getting the set fully set up and mm-hmm. put together. And let's just say we've definitely got some things on the way. And we're really excited to share that with you guys. Me, Can't hey, wait. Guys. So, nice. oh, we got a lot of stuff to show yeah. you guys. A lot of stuff to drop. And it's coming all at once. So, be yeah. ready. For sure. And if you made it all the way to the end of this episode, you a real one. For sure. And we fuck with Keep you. Keep supporting. Like, comment, share. Leave ratings, reviews. Definitely. Yeah. Send us any questions. You can email us. Um, anything. We're down to talk. We're always down to talk. Hell yeah, anytime. Yeah, so let's get into these kind of words. What are yours? Mm, my kind words are make sure that you have a plan. And even if it doesn't always go according, you still had a plan. That way you had some structure to do something or get something done and it gets done. Motivation. Motivation. Yeah. Mine would be treat yourself like the god or goddess you are. No. Going along with the theme. I've been listening to Treat Me by Chloe Bailey quite a bit lately, and it's really just a nice reminder to treat yourself good. Love yourself. Don't expect everybody else to love you. You gotta have your back. And I don't know. I just love that song for one. I I know everybody be talking shit about Chloe Bailey, but I I like her. So yeah, those were our kind words. That was our Lint Persian Myth Mashup. Mm-hmm. And wow, we were like a little extra lit in this episode, like so lit that we could take a nap lit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so yeah, anything else you want to say? Mm, just keep going, guys. We got some cool stuff coming, and as you can see, the lab is under construction. So definitely, yeah. good things are coming. Stick around. Stick around. And with that being said, this has been a Persian Myth Mashup. I've been your host, DJ. And I've been your host, Sam. Catch us next time on Deeper Deeper Than Than Most. Most.